too long, but we'll just hopefully not. But from the book of Psalms, the 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 6, it has already been read. But one key verse that we want to stick on is verse number 6, where it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In life, we always seem to be able to quote some cliche phrase or a catchphrase that we like to say, like, I'm blessed beyond measure. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too anointed to be disappointed. I'm too fried up to be fed up. I have been called out so I don't have time to be burned out. I don't have time to give up. I just have time to lift him up. All these cliches we seem to quote up, it's a good catchphrase that we can catch on to. But the true believing in God will start with me, amen? It starts when we can confess and believe in God, amen? amen? This morning, the topic of the message is when God blesses you, what are you going to do? Amen? amen? When God blesses you, what are you going to do? But do we really practice what we preach? Or believe in what we utter out of our mouth? But when it comes to God blessing us, we are locked, we're top, and we're ready to rock with the blessings or blessings we are waiting for God to bless us with, amen? amen. Let's be real today. We have all at times wondered when our blessings will arrive. Will it be today? Will it be tomorrow? Will it be next week or the week after that? We often ask ourselves, what is God going to bless me? We have watched others get blessed all around us. Others get answers to their prayers. Others might use God in another way that we see not pleasing unto us, but they seem to still get blessed by God. When it seems like everything and everybody else, when they touch things in life, that their touches and the things that they touch become like gold, while anything we touch seems to fail or to fall apart. But yet still, God continues to bless us. Amen? I like how God, I like how good has a way of always outshining bad. I like how God has shown this method of checking who we are or who we claim to be. God will first of all check your attitude. He will bless those that have hurt you to see your reaction. Because many times we see others getting blessed, we react, why not me, God? Why I can't have that same thing that somebody else has had? But God has his own blessing in store for each and every one of us today. Yes. Amen? Amen? It's not sometimes we want other people blessed, but that blessing that God has for us is for us and not for anybody else. Amen? Amen. He will bless those that use us to check our reaction as well. What's your attitude like when your fellow brother or sister in the ministry is grown and yet you're still not grown? Or you're still sitting on your old rusty desk, not being used or being blessed by God? But you say yet and still, when is God going to bless me? God tells us daily that we should help one another. We should help our brother. We should help our sister. We should pray for his or her ministry, his or her family, his or her life. We should take time to bless others before we receive yes. that blessing Amen. from God. Amen? Amen? Because we're all in this together. Yes. We need to help each other out. We need to have our own revival within and bless others. Well, God has blessed us with as well. Amen. There's a principle in the Bible concerning blessings that we all have to take a closer look at today. A blessing originates from God. He is the giver and the taker of that blessing. Amen? Amen. While in the meantime, we are ready to be that humble receiver or whatever God has placed for us to receive. But many times, we don't want to do the late work that comes in between us receiving that blessing this morning. Amen? However, in life, there's a prerequisite to the blessing. The blessing is predicated by and activated by our own initiative. We have to act in order for God to react and to pour out his blessing unto us. Journey with me for a few minutes and see how God has always blessed his children. Amen. Let's go back to good old Father Abraham, a person that we always seem to use. Good old father Abraham, God told Abraham, I will bless those that bless you. They had to first bless him before they would be blessed. Amen? Amen. Esau, another character that we oftentimes use, had to go and get the 
this and they prepared before his father gave the blessing. Amen? Amen. So in these two analogies, we see that they had to do something. A reaction had to take place or an initiative before that reaction by God was delivered. Amen? Amen. We also look at Moses, who instructed the people to concentrate, to consecrate to the Lord. Then he will bestow the blessing upon them. Many times in life we are so ready for that blessing that we don't take time to understand that God has something great in store for us. Amen? Amen. We want to get that blessing and run with it. But sometimes God wants us to take that blessing and enjoy it for ourselves and get that great understanding of what he has in store for us to do. When you love him as brother and not render evil for evil, but on the contrary, you give a blessing. That's why it's important that we always bless one another. There's always something that you initiate, that needs to be initiated, that triggers that response from God when he says, I'm going to pour out a blessing upon them. Yeah. Many times, like I have said before, we're, we're waiting for that blessing, but not doing what God asks us to do to receive that blessing. Amen? Amen. We can do whatever we feel we're being back to do, but when it comes time for us to be in need of something, we always call out to God and ask Him to be able to bless us, amen? Even though before He even was going to bless us in the beginning, we're doing things outside of His will. But when God's will is upon your life, God will let nothing be taken away from you, amen? God will continue to bless you, even in your mess, amen? Even in your mess. But I want to encourage you today. You may not see it right now that the blessing that God has in store for you. You may not even be feeling it right now, what God has in store for you. But if you follow the way of the blessings, it will catch up to you. Amen? Amen. If you follow the will and you follow the way that the Father has in store for you, you will catch that blessing. If you just do what God has ordained you to do. You have no choice but to be blessed. If you follow God's will. It's like it's getting paid on the 1st and the 15th. Come on now. It's automatic, right? For those who are in the military, on the 1st and the 15th guarantee, you're going to get a paycheck. Amen? 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 And for some of our other brothers and sisters who's out there on the welfare system as well, they know on the 1st and the 15th that I'm guaranteed my check. And if that check ain't in my account, I'm coming to knock on somebody door. Amen? Because that was something automatically that I felt that should be given unto me. Amen? amen? But this is how God's work. Amen? We want to expect things from God. But God also expects things from us in return. Amen? He expects for us to be willing. He expects for us to be available. He expects for us to be ready, willing, and able to do whatever he presents before us. And not to hesitate. Amen? But many times in life, we do that hesitation. And we like to, as they call second guess God and think that we can be God in our lives. Amen. But it's the shoe is on the other foot. We want God to be the head, the ruler of our lives and for us to fall in line with his, with his will. Amen? Amen. Don't fall straight and fall into those things that take you away from God. God wants us to always to give the focus, the power, the praise unto him and watch him pour that blessing unto you. Amen. Amen. You don't have to beg for it. You don't even have to worry about it. But we know in our Christian walk, God is bound by his word. And God is bound to continue to bless each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. We preach about the goodness and the mercy following us. But if all they do is just follow us, what good does it accomplish? Amen? Amen. Let me say that one more time. We preach about the goodness and the mercy always following us. But if all they do is follow us, what good does it accomplish? Amen? Here's a quick story I'd like to share for a few minutes. To, there's something that happened on Martin Luther King Day this year to, to me and my wife. It was an exciting day. We uh, felt that we were going down to see a good thing in Ashley because we wanted to be a part of the Martin Luther King Day parade this year. So we went down there and saw some great, wonderful things. But let me quickly tell you about a story. We saw a man in action this year at the Martin Luther King Day parade. While I was walking around and coming out at the Martin Luther King Parade this year, I stumbled upon a homeless guy. And he asked me, young man, young man, do you have $2 so I can get something out of Starbucks? 
So I looked at the guy and I was like, yes, I have more than $2, but you only asked for $2. So I said, is this all that you desire or this all that you want? So he said, young man, young man, all I asked was for $2 just to see if he was going to give it to me. So I said, hey, sir, hold on one second. Let me see what I have in my mind. I said, I got a couple of dollars here to spare, but what do you need is only $2. So I leaned in my pocket and I said, I got more than just $2 in store for you. So the man reached out his hand and he gave me a smile. And I was like, you're smiling, what's going on? He was like, well, I just have something here to say to you, that God is going to continue to bless you. Amen. Amen. No matter how big or how small the offering that you are going to give us to me, God is going to continue to bless you. So I went in my pocket, gave him the money, and as soon as I gave him the money, he went on his merrily, merrily way. And so I thought. Well, about 15 to 20 minutes later, Sister Schubert said, while we were sitting outside in the sun, let's go get something to drink. Because you know what? I'm thirsty. So I looked at him and said, you're thirsty, so what do you desire? Do you want some water? We have a lot of water out here. The water is free. And she said, no, I want something else that's going to be refreshing. It's going to quench my thirst. So I said, okay, we have some places here in the area that, that's going to help quench your thirst. We have ABC store. We have Starbucks. We have all these other places along the way on Carolina Avenue. But instead, she said, let's go to Starbucks. So I said, okay, let's go to Starbucks. So we proceeded to go to Starbucks. And once again, I ran into the same guy. Sitting back over here by Starbucks outside, offering and asking for money once again. So he approaches and shakes my hand and gives me a hug. At this time, my wife was like, who is this person coming upon you or trying to hug upon you and to see who is it? And I was like, oh, this is a guy that I just met about 15 to 20 minutes ago who came by and asked me for a couple of dollars so he could get money. It's merrily, merrily little way. So Sister Shuba gives me that look. Like, there's something, what is going on here? What is going on? I'm, everything's cool, calm down. Nothing to get upset about. This is the homeless guy named Travis that just, I just met 10 to 15 minutes ago. Next thing, he comes in the store and people start to stare. They're looking at him because he looks different. But he's not. He's one of God's children. One of God's creation. No matter how he looks on the outside, he's still one of God's great creatures. Amen? So that's how I looked at it. I didn't look at him being homeless or anything like that. I looked at him being a child of God, needing assistance, and he asked one of his fellow brothers to, to pour out a blessing unto him. Amen? Amen? So as once again, he approaches and shake hands. We continue to, to talk. He decides he wants to get in line now. He goes around the Starbucks trying to talk to people trying to get money, but most people blew them off. So he just continues to talk and praise God and keeps telling everybody how God's going to bless him. And he keeps just going around touching people. Some people don't want to touch him because he smells and he looks different from everybody else. But some people engaged with him, had a conversation with him, but they didn't bless him with any money. So he just continued to move on and continue to move on until he came and caught my eye again. And this time, he got right behind me, but in front of the person that was behind me and got in line and acted like we were together. So he started talking. To me and Sister Shuba. Sister Shuba was doing her own little thing, waiting in line to get her some Starbucks coffee because that's what she likes to drink. She was focusing on the coffee versus focusing on the person that God has placed for us to entertain for the next few minutes. So the next thing that happened, he continues on with the conversation. And everyone that comes across or by us, he keeps saying that God is going to bless them, amen? And every time they look at him in a strange kind of way. God is going to continue to bless each and every one of us regardless of the situation that we may find ourselves in in life, amen? But it takes that one thing that takes the, the ordinary to be extraordinary when we reach out to God, amen? And that God gives us for the way that he desires to be amen? amen? So as the God continues to bless everybody, we continue, the line is pretty long because everybody is down here for Martin Luther King's parade. So as we continue to move along in the line, the line just keeps moving slowly, keeps moving slowly. But the guy continues to talk and wants to carry on a deep conversation, amen? As he continued to talk and talk, he, he kept saying to everybody, God bless him, God bless him, God bless him. While we continue to entertain this guy, we get closer and closer and closer to the line. The man just cries out and says, hey, I don't need a drink. I already got the money because I was going to buy him something to drink. He was like, don't worry. I got this hand. I already have the money to get a drink. But he was just saying, he was trying to see if I was just going to turn the other way and not try to give him any money when he asked. But I said, you got the right person at the right time in the right place. And I'm going to do that one of you to the God. Amen. Amen. So God will put people in your life, people in your way to text you to see 
how true you are in him. Amen? So when we see that homeless person, when we see somebody in need, God sometimes put that situation in our life to challenge us, to test us, to see are we really walking that walk or talking that talk that we claim to be talking. Amen? Amen. That man was down on his luck and was panhandling everyone that he could see on Kapalani Avenue or Kapalani Beach Park. Before that, I remember him, I remember seeing him and I was like, this guy's going to keep walking, he wasn't going to come my way. But I said, no, I'm going to keep walking straight to him because I think this is what God wants me to do. I didn't know he was going to ask me anything, but I was prepared just in case. I would say, God, if he desires to get something, he don't want something to drink, then that you bless it upon me to be able to be a blessing unto him. As we got our drink and continued on our way, this same guy strolled upon the cup, and he called out to them, may God, may the Lord our God bless you, which brings you love and joy and wealth and a fine family, following you all the days of your life. The couple that saw wasn't even paying attention to a word or listening to a word that he was saying. So then he yelled out one more time, may the blessings of the Lord was bring you love and joy and wealth and hope and a fine family following all the days of your life. There was a long pause from the couple as they passed by this guy with his cup stretched out asking for a hand. Then he shouted after them since they just mostly on by didn't even take the time to even acknowledge that he was existing or that he was one of God's creatures. Then he shouted out after them and made the blessings of God never catch up to him. That made me laugh for a second because he was actually, he was begging, trying to get something. He blessed him at first and then in return, he tried to curse him by saying he made the blessings of God never catch up with him. So I thought this was a little bit comical. I'm over here laughing, but Sister Shuba wasn't paying attention to what I was laughing at. But I was encouraged by this guy to always remember that we are going to be blessed by God when we are about to part of the business. Amen? That's why it's important to never underestimate what God has in store for you. Amen? I want to see the blessings of God catch up to me and to you and to come to fruition in our lives. I want to take the hold of, I want them to take hold of me and pour out unto me and my family and to the Scopefield Barracks main post chapel. Amen. Amen. Blessings that God has prepared and ordained for each and every one of us to receive from his hand. Amen. Amen. According to his word. Amen. Amen. Not just by day by day by day blessings. You can't live blessing to blessing. God may delay one to get your reaction. I'm talking about living a blessed life every single day. Amen. No matter how that situation may look or how the people are acting on your job or how your family are acting or how your spouse are acting or how your first sergeant or commander or anybody else in between our acts are acting. God wants us to have a blessed day. Amen. Every single day. In Psalm 23, David penned this in an hour, in one of his darkest hours. But it's not a song of complaint, but a song of David's confidence in God's grace and how God was going to bless him no matter what. If we go back a little bit further and take a, a deeper look into the song, Psalms 22, 1 and 6, we see, we get a glimpse of how David was feeling as he penned Psalms 23. In Psalms 22, it says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far seen? Why are you far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish, my God. I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel prays. In you, our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and delivered them. To you, they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a warner and not a man. man. Scorned by everyone, despised by the people. Hey. But in all his frustration and pain, David still walked before God. Right. Even though he was not, an, not getting the answers that he wanted, he still walked with God. Yeah. Even though he was under spiritual attack at this time, he still walked with God. I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation while I praise thee. Yet their fear of the Lord, praise him. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them, then fear him. It was an honor this time of turmoil that David took his pen 
And he took the time and wrote Psalms 23. And in the same verse, which we were emphasizing on, on earlier, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We all want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. We all should want to dwell in the house of the Lord. In the scripture, it says that mercy we want mercy, amen. amen. It says, mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Mercy means favor or kindness for a good deed. Yes. Goodness and mercy are following us. It is very important to look at the meaning of the word follow. In this particular scripture, the word follow means to follow. It's a play on words. To follow means to follow, to be obedient, to follow. Obtaining the correct meaning gives us insight and revelation into the blessing that God wants to bestow upon us in this lifetime according to his divine will. The word follow in this particular scripture once again means to follow, to pursue, or to hunt. The scripture shows us that the blessings of God are hunting or chasing us. That means that they are on your trials, they're on your tribulation, they're everywhere that you go. And it's just a matter of time before they're going to catch up with you. That's the blessings, of course. It is in the good time. It is in the bad time. Every day that we are allowed to wake up and to give God the praise yeah. is a time to be blessed. Amen. Yeah. It might not be something that you want, but it's something that God gives to us every single day. Yeah. He gives us a blessing to be able to breathe the air that we breathe. Yeah. To see our family members on a daily basis. To hear the loving, kind words that our family members say to us each and every day. And to be able to walk hand in hand with our loved ones. God in itself gives us that blessing every single day. Amen? Amen. It is in God's time. You've been praying about it, looking for it, worrying about it, but it's been pursuing you. And it's about time to catch up with you. And you will be blessed beyond measures, heaped up, hyped up, amped up, pressed down, shaken together, and run it all over. God is going to continue to bless you. Amen? You have walked through the valley of the shadow of the devil. You have walked close to being financially ruined. You have walked close to getting a divorce. You have walked close to being hungry. You have walked close to giving up everything that God has given unto you. But you have remained faithful. And because of your faithfulness, there was a path for the blessing to follow. It followed you through the valley, over the mountain, through the storm, through the woods, through the rain, through the storm and everything else in between. It was getting closer and closer and closer. And now it's about to grab a hold of it and be released into your life because of your faithfulness unto God. Many times we don't realize how our faithfulness works for God. It's like us initiating something for God to react upon. Amen. Our faith has to always be instilled in God. No matter how it looks or my, no matter how it may come out. Have your faith in God because God will continue to lead you, guide you, and bless you beyond all measure. There's a proper avenue that goes that you must go down to receive these blessings of God. God is not a welfare program, but let me show you how you can still be blessed. You can't just sit at home and wait on a check and expect God to deliver to you in the mail time after time. You have to get into his word and understand that God has a message, God has a plan, God has something in store just for you. Reading through the book of Deuteronomy, we find the Lord laying down the, some of his greatest commandments and laws pertaining to our relationship with family, neighbors, God, and even our enemies. There were morals, there were laws that pertain until us today. We must live morally, we must live morally, God gives, gives lives. Such laws deal with the treatment of our neighbors, our family, strangers, and servants. And the fact that we must treat them right. We with a right spirit according to God's word. There was a law concerning giving a tenth unto the Lord, along with burnt offerings and peace offerings, and building up an altar when Israel came into the land, which was had milk and honey. It was flowing with a lot of milk and a lot of money. To many, milk and honey doesn't mean nothing, but to God, milk and honey is something that he created. And then he has blessed us with amen. amen. Let me take a commercial break for a second out of here and let you know what God has in store for us. We must still obey the law of God today. 
whether they are moral or spiritual or social, God instilled these laws for us to abide by. Amen. But the most important thing about the commandments of God are that they are commandments or promise. And Deuteronomy 28 and 1 it says, And it shall come to pass, and thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. That's a commandment with a promise. But let's take a closer look at verse 2. Here's the real fulfillment of that promise. And all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, and thou shalt hearken unto the voice of thy Lord thy God. The Bible lists over 22 blessings in this chapter alone. Every blessing from God becomes the general great point for another greater blessing. And in receiving one blessing from God, you open up, up another door for succeeding and greater blessing to come. Amen? amen? When one door opens, another blessing always yeah. follows. Amen? So when you're going through in life, always look at it like this. You're getting blessed beyond measure. But God opens another door, another blessing for you to receive. Amen? amen. If you fulfill his commandments, then his blessings will catch up to you and overtake you. It's an automatic blessing because it's a promise from God. That means if you obey, then he has to bless. Amen? amen? He cannot refuse it because God takes care of his children. Amen? amen. If you do your part, on, God. God is bound by his word to do his part. Amen? amen. Proverbs 28 and 20 says, a, a faithful man shall abound with the blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. By making haste or trying to get rich quick, he by passing the commandments of God. Therefore, by passing the blessings of God in his life, he is not innocent. Therefore, he is not blessed of God, but rather brings a curse upon what he has. Ananias and Sapphira sold a possession. Nothing wrong with that. Kept back a part of the price. Nothing wrong with that either. But they lied about it and destroyed their blessings. Amen. Amen. The blessings that God had for their life. Peter said, why did you lie while it remained? It was yours. And even after you sold it, it was yours to keep. Uh -huh. You know the story? He fell down dead about three hours later. And also three later on, she fell down dead as well. God would have blessed them anyway. But they didn't want to give free to Amen. They didn't want to give freedom to what God had asked of them. Amen? Amen. Malachi, the third chapter, shed some light on this subject. A question is asked, will a man rob God? Oh, come on, man. And in answering this, this question, I ask you to think about it wholeheartedly. And answering this question is asked, Jack, you have robbed me. And you say, wherein have you robbed me? In tithes and in offering. You have cursed with a curse, but you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now a mathematical equation for a blessing is about to be given in the next few minutes. Here's how to reverse that curse. It says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me here with, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you up the windows of heaven, and pour ye out, keyword, a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, Neither shall the vine cast her fruits before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. The time we understand here is giving a tip to God, giving your time, your money, and your talent, and etc., etc., that goes in between. The offering here goes beyond.